Hello everyone, uh, welcome. Uh, this is our last lecture of uh, week 9. Uh, what we have done so far is we have, uh, we have applied method of consistent deformation for trusses and then for beams. What we will do today is we will apply the method of consistent deformation for indeterminate frame. The concept again remains same, only the applications are different. Okay. So, to start with, uh, so today is um, method of consistent deformation applied to indeterminate frames. Let us start our first example. Um, uh, now, you see um, this is an indeterminate frame. If you remember the first step of method of consistent deformation is to find out what is the static indeterminacy. Just by looking at this frame, you can say that for this it is static indeterminacy n s is equal to 1. Okay. Now, now the second step is uh, we have we have one horizontal reaction here, one vertical and then one horizontal and one vertical. So, total four reactions, three unknown. So, n s is equal to one external indeterminacy. Now, the next step is to identify the redundant force. What we can do is we can say uh, um, keep uh, the end A as it is and uh, uh, take C y, this is C y and this is C x, this is A y and A x, A x, take let us take, take C x as uh, um, redundant force. If C x is as redundant force then the primary structure becomes uh, we need to release this corresponding uh, corresponding um, constraint. So, this n becomes roller support which is this is the primary structure this is a b and c this is 2 l and this is l. So, this is our primary structure. Okay. Now, this was step 2. Now, the step 3 is we need to analyze the primary structure subjected to uh, the external load and then this primary structure analyze the primary structure uh, subjected to the redundant force. Okay. So, let us do this here. So, the primary structure uh, we have seen the primary structure is this right. So, this is uh, this point was A which is hinge, this is roller, this is B and this is C which is subjected to uniformly distributed load, uniformly distributed load okay, fine, uh, this is Q. Okay. Now, this is L, this is L and this is 2L. Okay. Now, this is the primary structure subjected to external load. Similarly, we have the primary structure subjected to the uh, redundant force. So, this is again roller the hinge, this is roller A, B, C, this is L, this is 2 L and the redundant force is this is redundant force which is x 1 uh, in we have to apply the unit load. Here. So, this is the primary structure subjected to external load, primary structure subjected to the unit load. Okay. Now, we need to analyze it. Okay. Now, let us find out what is the uh, what is the expression for bending moment for this. Uh, so, we have two members in this frame member A B and B C. So, bending moment expression we have to find out for both the members. Let us first for B C. Uh, for for B C. For B C, okay. Uh, before that, uh, what would be the free body diagram of the entire structure? This is an indeterminate uh, structure. Free body diagram will be uh, the, these force will be C Y. This is C Y, and then we have A Y and A X. A X. Okay. Now, since there is no horizontal force, A X will be zero. And then, if we take some, if we take moment about A, uh, then we get what we get C Y, and the value of C Y will be um, value of C Y will be um, Q into L. This will be uh, Q into uh, L. Q into L. Similarly, A Y will be Q into L. So this is the support reactions for the. Um, primary structure. Okay. It is just the application of static equilibrium equation. Now, let us take one section at uh, say any section at, at a distance x from c, at a distance x from c and draw the free body diagram of that section. So, this is 
this is C y which is q into L and then it is subjected to q and this distance is x. This distance is x then we have uh, we have sh this is v here and this is m here. Okay. Now, if we take moment about this point we get uh, summation of then we get moment is equal to expression for moment is equal to q l x minus q x square by 2. So, this is the expression for moment between B and C, but what is important here the x is measured from C, x is measured from C. Okay. So, when we integrate it then we have to take the limit from C to B. So, this is the expression for bending moment for B C and let us take the expression similar expression for A B. So, for for A B, uh, we can see that if we take any section between A and B and draw the free body diagram, uh, we'll, we can you can you can you can say you can find that M is equal to M will be the expression for M will be 0. So, for this case for this primary structure subjected to external load bending moment is quadratic uh, as per this equation between B and C and between A and B bending moment M is, is equal to 0. Okay. So, this was for uh, this was for uh, um, primary structure subjected to external load. Okay. Now, let us do this similar exercise for the primary structure subjected to um, unit load. Now, uh, again if we draw the free body diagram uh, this is be A x, A y and then A x, A x and then we have C y here. C y here. I have already told you many times that uh, in this case I am writing the I am drawing the free body diagram on the actual structure itself, but actually when you draw the free body diagram you need to remove the support and uh, and, uh, and represent the support by by their characteristic forces. Okay. So, support and uh, uh, and the reaction cannot be uh, shown together. Okay. Uh, so, C y you will get if you draw the equilibrium if you apply the equilibrium condition C y will be uh, half and then similarly A x will be 1, A x will be minus 1 and A y will be minus half. These are the support reactions, these are all the support reactions. Okay. Now, draw the uh, for B C, for B C the expression for M, M uh, for primary structure subjected to um, subjected to unit load we use uh, symbol small m m will be if you take any section x if you take any section x from c any section x from c then draw the free body diagram you get m is equal to x by 2 so but in this case x is measured from c okay now, similarly draw the free body find the expression for um, bending moment for A B and again you can take any section here and apply the equilibrium condition and if you do that then you get M is equal to X and in this case X is measured from A from A. Okay. So, we have primary structure expression subjected to external load expression for moment then the primary structure subjected to external load uh, subjected to redundant force we have the moment this is step 3 and this is step 4. Okay. Now, what we need to find out we need to find out what is the displacement at, uh, at point C uh, due to this external load and what is the displacement at point C due to the uh, due to the redundant force and then apply the compatibility condition to get the unknown redundant force. So, let us find out what is the displacement at this point. Uh, again we can we, we can apply the unit load method and what unit load method says that uh, d L 1 d L 1 d L 1 is equal to uh, that is the expression we use in the case of beam as well d L 1 means the displacement uh, displacement of point uh, where your redundant force is x 1 and the, that displacement is measured in the direction of x 1. Uh, this displacement is due to the primary uh, primary um, external load. So, that is integration integration of m into small m by E i 
dx. Okay. Now, we have two part a b and b c. So, that integration has to be done over a b and b c. So, over a b m by e i d x plus integration of b c m by e i over and that is d x. Now, uh, for a b for a b capital M is equal to 0. So, this part will uh, this part will become 0 and for b c your x varies from 0 to 12 that is how we have taken x and then m is this and small m is x by 2. Okay. So, uh, substitute that. So, this become 0 to 12 uh, 1 by e i uh, into capital M is uh, capital M is q l x minus q x square by 2 and then small m is x by 2 that is dx. Okay. And now, if we do this integration the expression what we get is q l 4 this is capital L use the divided by 3 e i. So, this is d L 1. Okay. So, this is the displacement in the primary structure uh, due to external load and this displacement is measured in the direction of uh, in, in the direction of x 1. So, similarly we can uh, obtain the um, obtain the displacement in the in the primary structure due to the redundant force and that displacement will be f 1 1 into x 1. x 1 is the redundant force and f 1 1 is the associated flexibility coefficient and what is the expression for f 1 1? Expression for f 1 1 is equal to integration m uh, uh, m 1 in this case it is m 1 and m is same because uh, had it been many redundant forces made more than one static indeterminacy we use uh, we would have used m 1 m 2 and so on but since it is just the one static indeterminacy 1 so we have used small m so this is m square by e i okay and this is this is will be over a b plus and then uh, b c m square e i d x. Okay. So, yes. Now, then f 1 1 f 1 1 become a if you if we substitute that we know what is the expression for uh, m between b c is x by 2 and a b is x. So, this become uh, 0 to l for a b and it become x square by e i d x plus 0 to 12 and m is x by 2. So, it becomes x square by 4 e i d x. Okay. Now, if we do this integration and we get f 1 1 is equal to l cube by e i. So, this is the coefficient for um, uh, this is the associated coefficient. Okay, so it is flexibility coefficient. Okay, now, now what is step step five? Step five is the compatibility condition, and the compatibility condition at C is since it was hinge support in actual structure. So you know, there is there should not be any horizontal displacement. So compatibility condition will be displacement from this plus displacement from this. The summation should be equal to zero. So displacement from displacement for uh, external load applied to um, displacement for in the primary structure applied to external loads d l 1 and displacement in the primary structure due to redundant force is equal to x 1 into flexibility coefficient 1 1 that should be equal to 0. So, if we substitute that uh, d l 1 is equal to q l to the power 4 by 3 e i 3 e i and then plus x 1 into l cube by e i is equal to 0 and this gives us x 1 is equal to q uh, x 1 is equal to q l by 3. So, horizontal reaction 
in in this so in this problem so in the it is an indeterminate problem so horizontal reaction will be uh, ql by 3 now once we know the horizontal reaction means in this case it was redundant force then with the knowledge of that uh, inf that information about the horizontal reaction the structure now become uh, determinate structure now we can apply the um, apply the uh, now we can apply this uh, we can apply the um, we can apply the uh, all these equilibrium condition now as i as i said so here we have two two cy and cx cx and here it was ay and ax so initially it was four unknown we could not determine now cx is known so with the knowledge of cx only unknown we have is ax ay and cy we have you can apply equilibrium condition to get these unknowns uh, and then internal forces at any uh, any at any point okay now this this is the first that that finding the internal forces applying the equilibrium condition is the step 6 uh, that we not discuss here because we have we have done it many times uh, in determinate structures okay okay next is uh, next example is take the same example but the difference is um, in this this the end a, a for the first example end a is uh, is hinge uh, pinned now make it a uh, fixed support now once we make it fixed support means what exactly uh, we are doing we are um, we provided one more additional uh, constraint and that constraint is rotation at A. So, what is the uh, static indeterminacy in this problem? Here we have uh, three reactions A x, this and then this and then, um, then uh, 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 moment at A and in the here you have C y and then uh, C y and C x. So, total five unknown three uh, equilibrium equations we have. So, N s static indeterminacy is 2. So, um, that is our first step. The second thing is the identifying the redundant um, identifying the redundant forces. Now, when we have more than one uh, static indeterminacy, you have you have we have more than one choices of uh, redundant forces or selection of redundant forces. For example, one case is we can take case 1, uh, case 1 case 1 we can take C x and C y as redundant force and if we take C x and C y as redundant force our primary structure become like this. It is it remain as fixed and there is no support at C x because both the reactions C x and C y we have taken as redundant force. Now, this is again a statically determinate structure. So, this is this could be one choice and another choice could be take take C x, C x and M a as redundant force means horizontal uh, horizontal reaction at C and and the moment at point A is redundant force. And if we are taking C x and M a as redundant force in the primary structure associated associated degrees of freedom needs to be released. Now, C x so the primary structure become in this case if we if we release if we allow horizontal horizontal movements this hinge support become roller support and then if we if we release the rotational constraint means ma then this uh, fixed support become uh, hinge support okay so this is our primary structure now this primary structure is very similar to the primary structure we have taken it for uh, we have taken in the in the previous example okay so in this case these are two redundant forces uh, now what we do is we we go with this choice because some part of uh, because we have for the two reason one is already we have done some calculation in the previous example that calculation we can use for this for this example and the second thing is uh, if we take this uh, if we take this case then what happens mm, then you are taking one uh, you are taking one force and one moment uh, as uh, as constraint. Okay, so let so let us go with it. So our primary structure because now we have since two mul two degree of uh, static indeterminacy. We need to solve uh, three determinate problems. One is primary structure subjected to the external load and then 2 and 3 is primary structure subjected to redundant 1 and the primary structure subjected to redundant 2. So, first is the primary structure again this is the primary structure which is hinge here 
and then again roller here which is subjected to uniformly distributed load of intensity Q. This length is 2L and this length is L. This is the primary structure subjected to um, external load. Then we have a primary structure. We have primary structure which is subjected to redundant force in the direction of uh, the first redundant force this. Okay. So, in this case x 1 is equal to 1 unit load in the direction in the, in the direction of first redundant, uh, redundant force and then third we have primary structure. This is the primary structure which is subjected to second redundant force and the second redundant is the this moment here. So, here x 2 which is equal to 1. So, x 1 is C x and x 2 is moment at a uh, in this case they are subjected to unit load in the direction of x 1 here it is subjected to unit load in the direction of x 2. Now, let us find out what is the next we need to find out the expression for bending moment for, uh, for, the, for the entire structure A B C. So, A B C then A B C. Let us let us do that. We have already done some calculation. Uh, let us divide it into three part. Okay, okay. Now, so for this, for this we have just now done for AB, for BC, for BC uh, expression for M will be. Q L x minus Q x square by 2 and in this case your x is measured from, from C okay. and then for, um, for A B for A B m is equal to 0 m is equal to 0 right. So, this already we have and then and the second case for this, this also we already have now for B C just we have done it in the previous example M 1 is equal to x by 2 where it is from C x is measured from C and then for A B for A B it is M 1 is equal to x and it is from A. The from A. Now, we need to do it for this. Okay. Now, again if you apply the uh, equilibrium condition then what we get? We will get C y is equal to um, this is C y. Uh, we get C y is equal to 1 by 1 by 12. Okay. And uh, A x will be 0 a x will be 0 and uh, a y will be uh, a y will be um, for minus 1 by 12. Okay. Now, uh, then for B C for B C the expression for moment if we take any section here if we take any section here and this is at a distance this is at a distance x please remember one thing. Uh, in the primary structure uh, for a given for a given member say for instance here BC in the primary structure whatever moment expression we have uh, we have obtained in all the expression x is measured from C and then in the primary structure which are subjected to redundant forces there also you make sure that you use the same uh, same convention because uh, when you if you do not use the same convention then the integration will be a problematic because uh, you have to essentially integrate product of this and this if in both the cases definition of x is different then uh, integration will be different. So, in both the all the structure the, 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 the how the x is measured how the x is defined that should be uniform. So, for uh, B C m 2 will be m 2 will be x by 12 x by 12 this x distance into multiplied by uh, 1 by 12 is the reaction and then similarly for a b for a b we have m 2 is equal to m 2 is equal to 1 here x is from a from 
in this case it is from C and uh, from C and in this case it is from A. So, we have already obtained all the expressions for bending moment capital M, M1 for the first redundant and M2 for the second redundant. What now we need to find out? We need to find out the corresponding displacements and the flexibility coefficients. Okay. Now, what are the corresponding displacement and flexibility coefficient? Now, first displacement is DL1, DL1. Okay. Now, DL1, uh, final expression will be DL2, uh, if you remember, plus the, this is final compatibility equation that we may have, we will have F21, F22 is equal to 0. Now, what is DL1? DL1 is the displacement in the uh, or the deformation in the primary structure uh, subjected to external load in the direction of x1 and DL2 is the uh, primary structure displacement in the primary structure uh, due to the external load in the direction of x2 and f11, f21, f12 and f22 they are flexibility coefficients. Okay? And f11 is actually the displacement in the direction of uh, di in the direction of uh, in the direction of x1 due to unit load again in the direction of x1. Similarly, f12 is the di displacement in x1 uh, due to the unit load in the direction of x2 and f21, f22 also can be defined as this and the compatibility equation is this. Now, what now we will do? You need to find out all these, these displacements and these compatibility and these flexibility coefficients. Now, what is DL1? DL1 is equal to again we can apply unit load method that is m into small m1 by ei dx. Okay? And then DL2 will be DL integration m small m2 by ei into dx. Okay. Now, this integration can be done over a, b and b, c separately and then sum them. Again, it can be done over a, b and b, c and then sum them. Similarly, f11 will be f11 will be integration of m1 square by ei dx and f12 will be integration of m1 m2 by ei into dx okay and similarly f2 f21 will be same as f12 that is this matrix is symmetric and then f22 will be integration of m2 square by ei dx now all these all these moment expression m capital m m capital m small a1 and small m2 that we have already determined here we have already determined here. Now, what we need to do is we need to substitute these values in those integration and then uh, put the limit and get the integration. And if we do that, then the expression that we will get DL1, DL1 will get, DL1 will be same as the previous example, which is Q L to the power 4 by 3 E i and DL2 will be q l to the power l cube by 3 e i 3 e i it one good check is so this is d l 1 and d l 2 ok. Now, you see just by looking at this looking at this expression you can at least say whether whether they are correct or not that depends on the uh, on the on the integration that you have to do this integration, but whether they are wrong or not then that you can say by looking at them. Because you see their coefficients in both the cases q and 3 i they are same. But in first case it is L to the power 4 and the second case it is L cube. The reason is reason is obvious because in the first case our degrees of freedom uh, is the displacement and the second case uh, degrees of freedom is the rotation. Okay. And the uh, so uh, so they are dimensionally consistent. Okay, so whenever you get the expression of anything, first you check whether they are dimensionally consistent or not. And if you find they are dimensionally not consistent, then there 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 has been some mistake, and then you check your calculation. Now similarly, you can get f11. F11 is uh, again it will be same as the previous one, L cube by EI. And then f12, um, what you get is f12 will get 7 l square by 
6 ei 6 ei ok uh, similar observation you can obtain you can see from again f1 and f12 as well ok f11 correspond to rotation and f12 f12 correspond to um, correspond to displacement and are they dimensionally consistent yes they are dimensionally consistent because it is all it you, you have to multiply this expression to multiply this expression by force and if you do that then you will see this this dimension and this dimension will be same and again this dimension these dimensions will be same and similarly f22 you will get f22 will be 5l by by 3 ei Okay, uh, five L by three I. Now all these expression we have. Now this we need to substitute in this expression and solve it. And if you solve it, then you get x one is equal to minus zero point five five, and x two is equal to minus um, zero point one uh, minus zero point uh, one eight. Of course, it has to be Q L. Um, this is the coefficient and this has to be multiplied by uh, q l q l and this is q l square ok. So, this is the displaced this is the force and this is the moment and again you can see they are dimensionally consistent. So, this is the uh, this is the second example uh, which is very similar to the first example, but we have just added provided one more uh, one more um, constraint. Now, uh, the the idea has been to demonstrate the concept, uh, but um, this once you understand the concept, similar concept can be applied to um, any kind of structure. And intentionally, I took a problem where your bending moments are, uh, but some of the, the expression for bending moments are not very complicated. The reason is that we have to we have to demonstrate the concept in in a very uh, in a very in a short time, uh, but again, once you understand, once you have understood, if you have understood the concept, please go through the exercise given in the book and uh, and make yourself comfortable with the um, with the method. Okay, so uh, this week we have discussed. Uh, we started with previous week and uh, we discussed how what is the force method and how the force method can be used to uh, find out uh, internal forces and support reactions for different indeterminate structure for trusses for beams and for uh, for frames. Uh, there is the, there is another method called displacement method. Uh, if you remember to one or two weeks back, we just briefly outlined uh, what is displacement method vis-a-vis -vis, uh, force method. Now next uh, next week, um, uh, this is the ninth week. Uh, we have another three weeks for this course. So the next three weeks, what we do is we'll uh, discuss uh, different kinds of displacement method. Uh, so uh, your um, so, next week what we start is um, uh, displacement uh, methods. Okay? Uh, see you in the next week. Thank you.